Hey guys, Hitman89 here, I hope you're doing great. Last week we had the best RPGs of 2024, check out the video if you're interested. And today, we're gonna be looking at the 15 best single player games to play right now. I picked the best ones we had in 2024 so far, and a few 2023 games as well, so without further ado, let's dive right into it. Horizon Forbidden West Complete Edition came out on PS5 last year, and it finally just landed on PC. As you can see, it just looks insane. I am Dain. And I am Dain to know where you get that hair from. <laughs> Black people in Horizon have white people hair for some reason. In all seriousness now, every biome, every area, whether you're in the sky, underground or underwater, it's just so beautiful. Personally, I really hate robots and all that shit, so I wish Guerrilla would at some point make a fantasy RPG where you fight dragons, orcs and regular people with medieval weapons and armors. Anyway, back to Horizon. The bow and arrow and melee combination is really nice. Shooting off parts of big ass machines with special arrows and then finishing the job with your spear is satisfying, but not as satisfying as just flying around and enjoying the breathtaking scenery. Now if you want to play as a hot chick instead, then check out Stellar Blade. This game has tons of explosions and all kinds of special effects everywhere. It's also got pretty good combat, a little bit of platforming, and most importantly, delicious jiggle physics. I mean, what else do you need? Seriously now, once you get the hang of the parry and dodge timing, Stellar Blade is a blast. If you're still on the fence, just grab the demo and see for yourself. Moving on to the third game, Mana Lords is a realistic medieval strategy game where you'll have to micromanage pretty much everything. Soldiers don't just magically spawn out of buildings, they're the same people that live in your village, plus you have to craft or buy them spears, shields, etc. And the same applies to workers. My first Mana Lords run was going alright, until some pieces of shit raided my village, killed everyone and burned every single building to the ground. The second run went a lot better cause I knew what I was dealing with, so I prepared a little army, and to make sure I had enough soldiers, I even hired some mercenaries too. Problem is, those motherfuckers showed up way too late, so I lost half my population in that fight. I mean it's just 10 dudes but that's still half the people I had. Oh and as you can tell by the villagers going through the ground, Manor Lords is an early access title. <laughs> the full review will be on my channel in a few days, so stay tuned. At number 4 we have a story driven game. On Banishers Ghosts of New Eden, you play as a couple of banishers who do rituals to summon ghosts, talk to them, understand what really happened, and then either banish them or help them ascend. You'll also be fighting all kinds of monsters, and by all kinds, I mean mostly wolves and specters for like 80% of the game. At least the story is really good, the voice acting is also great, too bad the lip sync job sucks dick. Now to change things up, I decided to include the game with no combat. Pacific Drive will have you scavenging duct tape and rusty nails to fix your shitty car so you can keep traveling through these radioactive wastelands. Long story short, this is a post-apocalyptic road trip simulator, and I know you might not find the concept interesting, but I thought the same thing until I actually tried the game out, and honestly, it's not bad at all. Let's move on to the next game. This is the last time I put Baldur's Gate 3 on a list, and even though the game is a blast in co-op, in my opinion, to fully enjoy the story, you should play it solo. Having three companions, getting to know their stories and doing their quests adds a lot to the overall experience, plus they're extremely likable and interesting. The voice acting in this game is one of the best I've heard in a very long time. And if you're gonna be playing Baldur's Gate 3 for the first time, don't hesitate to try out different approaches. You'll quickly realize how many possible outcomes there are just by picking different dialogue options. Now I know the turn-based combat system might not appeal to everyone, but personally, I love it. If you only like real-time combat though, then you might like the 7th game on my list. I beat Dragon's Dogma 2 on PS5 in less than a week, and I'll probably play it again on PC by the end of the year and see if they manage to fix it. Cause right now, it runs like shit and it's full of bugs. What's going on? I don't know dude, I'm as confused as you. Sometimes it's just a weird camera angle like here, but it can also be a dragon clipping through the floor or the game literally pushing you off a cliff and killing you. But underneath all these issues, there's a great game that I loved playing. Seriously, so far, this is my favorite game this year. I wish it was 20 bucks cheaper and much more polished though. 
Moving on to the next game, I'm sure not that many people heard of the Thaumaturge, and that's why I wanted to have it on this list. It's currently only available on PC, but it's coming to PS5 and Series X later this year. I only started playing it like a couple of weeks ago, it's definitely not as depressing as The Witcher, but it's got the same vibes. The story intrigued me right away, and the gameplay is interesting too. It'll have you examining objects, talking to people, investigating, and looking for clues. By the way, you play as a polished dude called Victor with a W, and and you're not alone, you start with a skeleton pimp and later on you unlock some more of those weird guys who each have their own skills and powers. Keep in mind you'll also have to fight every now and then, it's a turn based system and I found it quite enjoyable. So if you're on PC, check it out, otherwise have a look at the ninth game instead. You guys still have your PS3s? Good, dust them off cause you're gonna need them to play Rise of the Ronin. Seriously, this was my reaction first time I played this game. <laughs> Brother, uh, what's that? I'm obviously joking, Rise of the Ronin looks like a PC game. On the lowest settings. Speaking of which, if you're on PC, just get Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut instead. I prefer Rise of the Ronin though, cause it lets you create your own character. So I made this handsome motherfucker, and believe me, he makes every cutscene so much better. Gliden and Horse Riding are also fun, the story is interesting, and some of the choices you make directly affect your missions. Stealth on the other hand will make you realize how bad the AI is. Sneaking up on these dumbasses is way too easy, and when you're riding your horse and they chase you, they either give up after 2 seconds or they get stuck on rocks and trees. Next we have one of the best looking games out there, Alan Wake 2. Apart from having a unique presentation, since the story is split between the two playable characters, you actually get to play most of the game in any order you want and it always ends up making sense. Too bad Alan Wake 2 is full of shitty jump scares. They don't even scare a pussy like me, so they're just useless. Everything else is awesome though. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth has plenty of mini games. Not gonna lie, I enjoyed them way more than the actual game. Oh, and if you played FF7 Remake, then you know how thirsty these chicks are. Tifa even showed me her tits. In all seriousness now, there are plenty of open areas to explore, and even though the game can look a little blurry in performance mode, the graphics are still pretty damn good. Except for the water, that shit looks nasty. Just like the water in Resident Evil 4. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button for more shitty transitions. I don't know about you, but Resident Evil is one of the rare games I feel like I have to beat more than once. That's why I finally started my second playthrough a couple of days ago, this time on PC, and I'm loving it. Shooting zombies in the knees and then kicking them with Leon's big ass boots makes me feel like I'm on fire. Not as much as this guy though. Keep in mind Resident Evil 4 isn't scary at all, but it's so much fun. Next we have a game that literally just came out. I mean an early access. No rest for the Wicked's art style will definitely remind you of the Ori games, and that's normal cause they're made by the same studio. This is an ARPG with a Souls-like combat system and an interesting character design. For some reason, everyone looks like a mix of Popeye and a motherfucking gorilla. All jokes aside now, I really like the gameplay, so if you have a decent PC and a controller, definitely check it out. Now I'm not into superheroes and all that stuff, but if you are, then you'd probably love Spider-Man 2. Swinging through the city and using your wingsuit is awesome, the game looks and runs great and I really love the seamless transitions from cutscenes to gameplay. This time around you have two playable characters and you can fight crime and help people out or annoy the pedestrians and watch them glitch out. I prefer the second option. Last but not motherfucking least, we have a Souls-like from last year that I think didn't get the attention it deserves. If you like Bloodborne, there's a high chance you'll also like Lies of P. It's got an interesting world, a unique enemy design, and it lets you play as Pinocchio if he looked like Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> and that's gonna be it for the best single player games to play right now. I hope you found something you liked. For more videos like this one and also some game reviews, please subscribe. A thumbs up would also be heavily appreciated, cause that's exactly what this dead channel needs. It's been Hitman89, see you guys very soon. Okay. I